Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to cover some basic Cisco uh, command line commands and the target audience for this is not for someone who wants to learn to be a Cisco uh, command line programmer but more for somebody who's either an entry level technician who needs to do some work um, with a support person uh, remotely to, uh, to diagnose some uh, router problems or maybe you're a network administrator but you're not that well versed on Cisco and you just need to be able to talk intelligently to someone who's trying to help you uh, troubleshoot some Cisco router problems. So what I use to connect to the, uh, the Cisco router is a program called Putty. It's free. You can get it anywhere. Just, just Google the word P-U-T-T-Y. Uh, if you have XP you can still use Hyper Terminal but they got rid of Hyper Terminal in Windows 7, Windows 8, and Windows 10. Um, so right here, so I've just opened up Putty, and in this little spot right here where it says host name or IP address, well, I want to change the little radio button here to serial, and then I want to specify my COM port for my connection. Uh, and speaking of which, if you if you have not made the console cable connection, uh, I have a video that I'll put the link text in here for you uh, that covers how to get your uh, laptop or computer connected to a Cisco uh, console port. Anyway, I know that mine is COM4, but let me show you real quick how to figure that out if you don't know. Uh, it's different in different operating systems. Like I'm using XP right now, so I'm going to go to my computer. I'm going to do uh, manage, and then I'm going to go to like hardware and device manager. Uh, I think you can still get, you're pretty sure you can still get to device manager in Windows 10. I know you can in Windows 7. But ultimately what you want is to go to, um, oops, I'm sorry, not, not manage. I wanted properties. and computer and properties and go to uh, hardware and device manager uh, just just search for the word uh, device manager in Windows uh, 7, 8 or 10 anyway so in device manager which looks the same in pretty much every version of Windows uh, you go down here to where it's got COM ports uh, COM and LPT and if you expand that if you've got your your USB to serial adapter plugged in and the drivers have been installed, you'll see right here it'll say USB serial port and in parentheses it shows what COM port it's on. So mine says COM4. So you'll need that piece of information in order to be able to get Putty to uh, to launch and to talk to the the Cisco router. So uh, my baud rate is going to be 9600, and um, that's pretty much been true for about forever. And I'm going to do open. And when it first opens, you won't see anything, but then if you hit the enter key a couple times, you get something like this. And um, now, either you know this because it was given to you when your router was installed, or if you're a technician, this information should be supplied to you by uh, the support person that you're working with. Um, also, you know, I've done support work in the field for many years, and one of the things you'll find sometimes is usually at this point, they'll ask if they can just take remote control of your laptop which is kind of a downer but that's just the way it works in any case we need uh, username and we need password and the first prompt you get is uh, kind of like a limited access prompt and what you really want to do is get into what they call the executive privilege mode or by typing the word enable so this is the first command we're going to cover which is enable Now you could type the word enable which is fine it'll ask for the password but if you really want to look cool, you could just do the shorthand, ENA. That kind of makes you look like you know what you're doing. Um, and that's true for a lot of Cisco commands. Uh, you can either type out the whole command, or you can type out just some portion enough of the command so that it's unique, and that will usually do the same thing. Uh, oops, I didn't do it right. Uh, let's see. Okay, when you get to the prompt where it has that little hash, or the, or the number sign or pound sign at the end, that means you're in the um, executive privilege mode or also sometimes referred to the enable mode. Really not much can be done outside of that. So that's going to be a must if you're going to do any work um, on, a, um, on a, the configuration or troubleshooting of a uh, Cisco router. All right, usually the most common thing that somebody will want to know when they're helping you troubleshoot an issue is uh, they want to know a picture of your running configuration. So that's done by typing the word show run. And what that does is it serves up onto the screen uh, all the configuration parameters. And it'll, it'll show you some, and then it'll have the word more, and then you hit the space bar, 
and it'll progress some more. You hit the space bar again, it'll progress some more. I'm not going to go into the detail about what all these things mean, but usually these are the, the details that someone who's helping either configure or troubleshoot a problem or making changes would want to know um, before they could get started. Now, do you notice as I, was, as I was doing that that I was losing stuff off the top of my screen? But you still have a scroll bar over here on the side, so you can still scroll up. And one of the things that will happen uh, frequently when you're working in the field with somebody who's remote is they'll ask you to do a copy-paste of the running config. So you'll go all the way up to the top where you type the command. You'll take your cursor. You'll highlight the whole thing and do a Control-C and then do a Control-P into an email so that, so that you can send that to them. Um, the other thing that sometimes will happen, too, is they'll send you a config and they'll ask you to copy and paste it into uh, the config T, which I'll, I'll talk about that in a minute. All right, so that's show run. Again, if you want to look cool, you could just do sh run. Okay, so, you know, in words, instead of typing out the whole word, I just type up enough of the word to, to be unique so that it's not the same as something else, and that'll do the same thing. All right, another one that I want to show you is when you have begun, I mean, when you've got to a point where you've either remedied the problem or changed the configuration, what has to happen next is that it needs to be saved. So in order to save, we want to do a write. What this does is it takes the changes you've made and saves them into the startup configuration. If you don't do a write and the machine is and the router is powered off or it's rebooted, any changes you made will be lost. So it's very important that we do a write. And again, if you want to look cool, just do WR. It does the same thing. All right, so I want to emphasize again, if you've made changes and the changes you want to keep, then you need to do a write before you reboot the router. Um, another one that is sometimes used, especially if you're starting from scratch or if you're having trouble um, with some just some very basics of getting the router going, is setup. So when you type setup, what it does is it runs this kind of a wizard and it, first thing it asks you is, do you want to configure with the, do you want to do a configuration? You say yes. And then it'll say, okay, um, do you want to enter basic setup information? Yes. And then it'll ask, like, what's the host name? And at this point, you could change it to whatever you want it to be. Um, and then it's going to ask you to set new passwords. I'm using some very elementary passwords, which is kind of a no-no, but this is just a lab configuration. Um, it's asking me if I want to do simple network maintenance uh, management protocol. I do not. I won't get into that right now. And so now what it's done is it's, uh, it's asking me, do I want to take and set up a management interface? So it's asking me, of the interfaces that are listed above, the, the Ethernet, the, uh, the serial, do I want to take one of those and set up as a, as a management interface? And I'm going to say yes, and I'm going to, I'm going to take um, the first one, the fast Ethernet. And then it's going to say, okay, do you want to use the 10 base T connection? Yes. Operate in full duplex mode? I actually want yes. Um, configure an IP on this interface? Yes. Now it shows me what the old one was. At this point, I can either just hit return to keep the old one, or I can type in a new one. And then the subnet mask, which I'll keep that. That's what I want to keep. Um, and then after that, it shows me the configuration that it made. And I can hit enter. Now, right here, this very last question, I can either choose to go back to the setup without saving this configuration. So maybe I made a mistake and I want to redo it. Or I can choose to save it and then that new information will be saved and it'll be the same as doing it right. Um, or I can just simply say, you know what, I'm just going to go back to the prompt and I'm not going to keep this. All right, so we're right back where we were. Uh, last command I want to share with you is uh, config T. And the reason uh, config T is short for configuration. Actually, I don't even know what the long, long version of that command is. Uh, uh, config uh, terminal, meaning that it, from, from the terminal that we're on right now. What that does is it puts you into configuration mode. So before when we were at the enable prompt, was before we had the word config in parentheses, we could show things, we could, we could run the setup command, but we really couldn't change IP addresses or change configuration. When you enter into config T or the config mode, 
This allows you to do things like set IP addresses or um, establish VLANs. And then when the configurations have been done, you type end and it leaves the configuration mode. And of course, remember, if you made changes, you got to do it right. got to do your WR. All right. So just to recap, um, if you are a entry-level technician who is troubleshooting a Cisco router in the field and you're going to be working with a support person, these basic commands should help you uh, sound like you kind of know what you're doing. You don't have to be an expert because a lot of times they're the ones that are the experts. They just need you to be the smart hands for them. Or if you're somebody who's working with somebody and you want to just at least sound like you know what you're doing, uh, those basic commands like enable, show run, uh, set up, write, and show, I mean, and config T should give you what you need to, uh, to get started. Okay, I hope this was helpful for you. Thanks for watching.